thank you for being here today. And this is a time of, of celebration when we celebrate the homegoing of one of God's children. I know that it's a time of mourning for many as a family, but we know that we'll see Charlie again. Age 93, not many people have the privilege of living that long. Born May the 15th, 1929 in Dickens, Texas, and he passed away on Easter Sunday morning. What a wonderful time to go, if one has to go, and we all do, to be able to go on Easter Sunday morning as we celebrate the risen Christ. And that's what it's all about. We know that the dead in Christ will rise. Those of us who are alive and remain shall meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wonderful, wonderful occasion. Charlie entered the Army and Air Force in 1948. And he served in Germany during the Korean War until 1952. He was transferred to Maxwell Air Force Base in 1953. He was a member of the Berlin Airlift. In 1961, he entered the Alabama Army National Guard full-time and retired in 1989. He was a member of Morgan's Chapel Methodist Church, the American Legion Post 44, Gulf Shores, the Gulf Coast Elks Lodge, the Berlin Airlift Association, the Commemorative Air Force, helping to restore old World War II airplanes. He was preceded in death by his daughter, Deborah Wright. He survived by his wife, Evelyn of Foley, his children were many, James Wright and his wife Kay, Charles Wright and his wife Valerie, Patrick Wright, Louis Scarborough, and Paul Wright. His brothers Jack Wright, Kenneth Wright, stepson Woody, and his wife Anita Woodall, <coughs> Grandchildren Aaron and his wife Crystal Woodall, Tristan Woodall and his wife Leanna, Kenya, Jessica, Stephanie, Jamie, Dylan, Deborah, and Rance. Great grandchildren Amelia, Carson, Camden, Charlie, Lily, Hamilton, Caleb. Tamara, Tamara, and Tanya, Lindley, Gabriel, adopted granddaughter, Nicola, and many other loving relatives and friends. Of course, the internment will be in Pensacola at the base. Thank God for a fruitful life. First time I think I met Charlie, I rolled up to the church. We were having, uh, I believe, a men's gathering in the early days. And I saw all the smoke coming out of the church. <laughs> I was afraid they may not know it was on fire. And I looked around the side and there said Charlie. As 
one of his favorite pastimes sitting on the side of the church there smoking. I told him one time, I said, you're the oldest person I know who smokes as much as you do. <laughs> he was like my dad. My dad smoked three packs a day, I believe, before he died. And I used to caution my dad about that, and he said, son, I've been doing it too long, and he said, if I stop, my lungs will collapse. <laughs> <laughs> as you noticed, as we gathered in the room prior to coming here, there was some music being played by Hank Williams, Jr., or Hank Williams, and, and I'm sorry, Hank Williams, Sr., and uh, he was quite a fan of Hank Williams, as are some of you, and me too. We have uh, one of the grandsons, uh, Tristan is, is it, I believe, who wants to share and just say a word to us. So I'm going to ask him to come and do that. And we appreciate uh, Kathy Peterson playing our music today. Hello friends and family. My name is Tristan Woodall and I am the grandson of Evelyn Wright and the step-grandson of Charlie Wright. Though I consider Grandpa Charlie my grandpa because he has been my best friend, my greatest teacher for the past 20 years of my life. Almost everything that I am today at 36 years old is an emulation of my grandpa. The wisdom that my grandpa has passed on to me is better than gold and all the riches of earth, and I hope I can pass it on to my children. Grandpa Charlie showed me also patience, gentleness, kindness, are also the keys to a good life. We spent a lot of time together, especially early in the mornings, drinking coffee, smoking cigarettes, and talking. Every conversation I had with my grandpa was a great one, and I am thankful for that. <clears throat> we had many road trips together, and we went to many Hank Williams festivals. He introduced me to Hank, and Hank Williams has been a good friend of mine as well. He taught me that a good singer-songwriter is a poet that sings about the human condition and how there are ups and downs all along the way. And if you really seek out the creator of the universe, God will show you how to maintain a content and balanced heart. Grandpa Charlie also gave me a love of history. I became so obsessed with history, I, I went and got a history degree. We have talked countless hours on all the civilizations of Earth, and we both have come to the conclusion that this America truly is the best. Grandpa Charlie also gave me a love of coffee. All I ever wanted to do was wake up early and drink. <coughs> drink folded black coffee with my, on the porch with my grandpa. He also taught me how to drink coffee while driving and while eating a sausage biscuit. <laughs> Grandpa Charlie told me about the old ways of living, how they survived and lived off the land, how everything was natural back then and how God intended. He taught me how to pay attention to the natural flow of the earth, the plants, the crops, the seasons, the animals. I love Alabama football and Braves baseball was also passed to me from my grandpa. I sat on his floor and, and him and his lazy boy for many games, drinking coffee, beer, and a little bit of bourbon. <laughs> I joined the army to be like my grandpa Charlie. We traded books back and forth, especially over Christmas. And about three days before Gramps left this world to be reunited with his loved ones, I bought a few Western books for him at the bookstore and was going to ship them and some coffee to him. But Grandpa don't need books or coffee right now because he's with the Creator himself. 
I'd like to read a song that I found in Grandpa's guitar books a long time ago. He, I, he wrote this called Railway to Heaven. Life is like a mountain railroad with an engineer that's brave. We must make the run successful from the cradle to the grave. Watch the curves, the fields, and tunnels. Never falter, never fail. Keep your hands upon the throttle and your eyes upon the rail. Blessed Savior, He will guide us till we reach that blissful shore where the angels wait to join us in that great forevermore. Now I'm going to walk this journey without, without my best friend. Grandpa, thank you for being my grandpa and showing me how to survive in this crazy world with a peaceful and content heart. Thank you for talking with me, laughing with me, listening and hanging with me. I will truly miss you, Gramps. Thank you.
Psalm 23. And he said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. Not the Lord is just a shepherd, but the Lord is my shepherd. And he personalized his relationship with God. And I believe that Charlie had personalized his relationship with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He was not a perfect man, but he was a Christian who believed in Christ and his resurrection as none of us are perfect. And there's no doubt in my mind that Charlie had placed his faith, his personal faith in Christ as his Lord and Savior and is with him today. The last verse of that psalm says this, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I know a man who named his two dogs goodness and mercy, and they followed him all the days of his life. But David meant more than that. He realized that God had been good to him and extended to him mercy. And when we stand before God, I do not want justice. I want mercy. As I'm sure you do. And that's why Jesus came. <clears throat> to show us grace and to show us mercy because we fail many times. We sin because we're human. We disobey. But God still loves us. And that's why Jesus died for us. Now that doesn't give us a license to live any way that we choose. We're to live for Him and to glorify Him. And one day, He says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life in this life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Difficult for us to wrap our minds around eternity. But it's a land where we'll never grow old. We'll never die. All because of Jesus. And we'll live with Him and forever with each other. We will see each other exactly how we will look and what age we will be is yet to be known. But we will know one another. And we'll be happy. The last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, says there, it'll be a place where there is no pain, no suffering, no separation, no sin, no darkness, no tears. We will be with God forever and ever and ever. So one day we look forward to seeing Charlie in heaven. As Jesus spoke to the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. 
On Easter Sunday morning, Jesus spoke to Charlie and said, Today you will be with me in paradise. And one day we'll go to be with him in our heavenly home. There are many things that I could say about Charlie that I know are memories that you have of him. It caught my attention that he and Evelyn on one of the pictures were sitting in a 57 Chevrolet. And he was driving and, and, and like they were cruising the interstate. I want to thank that Charlie is cruising around heaven today. And I know he's happy. I know he's healthy. And I know he is anticipating seeing you again. So make your peace with God. Confess Christ as your Lord and Savior. Privately and publicly. Follow Him. Don't be ashamed. Serve Him. And lead others to Him. By your example. I'm going to ask us to bow in prayer today and, and let's pray that God would strengthen us and God would comfort us and help us during our loss. And let's pray especially for the members of this family who suffered this loss. Father, we thank you for the promise of eternal life. We thank you that we can know you as our personal Lord and Savior, and that we can serve you all the days of our life. Lord, I hope that we too will be able to live to be 93. That we might serve you and serve others. We pray that we might be an influence upon our family members as this one spoke to us today about his relationship with his grandfather. What a testimony that is. What an influence that each one of us has upon others especially our family. Comfort them, Lord, during this time. Especially be with Evelyn as she faces the days ahead. And Lord, we know that probably all of us in this room today have lost someone close to us. That we love. And that we long to see again. Uh, Lord, help us to pray for each other, to encourage each other, to be happy, to serve you gladly, and without hypocrisy, to be genuine, to be real, not artificial. Not a carbon copy, but a real copy of the grace of God in our lives. Thank you for this time together. And we praise you, Lord, for the promise of everlasting life. All because of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs>
Family, just a moment. The Air Force is going to start military honors. For those that are veterans, you're more than welcome to salute during a playing taps. If not, put your hand on your heart.
or a priest saying a few words over your body or remains and then it will be over physically. How important it is to do the will of God on this earth. As Jesus said, to love God with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength, and to love others as we love ourselves.